How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Wednesday here on this program. You know what that means. We have a lot of news to get into here today. Not the least of which is the AEW Dynamite show coming up tonight. And we have seven segments announced for the show. And it does appear that the show will have an overrun. Why will they have an overrun? Well, I don't know. But we'll uh, we'll talk about the lineup and everything relating to it here on the show today. We've got the Raw ratings from Monday night. Show was down, but of course it was not the post-WrestleMania Raw which did the biggest number for Raw and God only knows how long. But still a very, very good number. We'll tell you about that and uh, the hourly numbers, the usual third-hour plunge, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. NXT 2.0 was last night. Three championship matches on the show. And we do have new NXT Tag Team Champions. We'll give you the update on how that show went. And uh, then in the final segment of the show today, we have a very special guest. We got New Japan coming up this weekend, and Juice Robinson is joining us on the program today. He'll be talking about New Japan, strong New Japan proper, and so much more. If you'd like to text us here today, phone number 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And, of course, later on tonight, myself and Dave Meltzer for subscribers to WrestlingObserver.com. And tomorrow, tomorrow's Wrestling Observer Live, I will actually be in the shoot. Wrestling Observer Live Sports Byline Studios in lovely San Francisco, California. So how much fun will that be? A lot to get into. Kick it off after the break, Observer Live. Back at the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, VB, also WrestlingObserver.com. You know, I always got a plan for this program. But then, uh, you know, it's like uh, we call it in the ring once the show starts. And so I may have something that I plan to open with. But then, you know, I look on the uh, I look on the Twitch chat. I try to avoid the YouTube chat. But I look on the Twitch chat here and... Uh, Man, what uh, what's everyone talking about here? And then I I go from there. You know what I'm saying? Well, so right what is everyone talking, talking about? about? Making talking about making uh, Denise making CM Punk cry. That's what they seem to be doing right now. No, you know what they're talking about? They're talking about Cora Jade. Ah, and they're also talking about how there was a blank screen where I'm supposed to be. There I am. <laughs> hey, so anyway, uh, here's the thing. So I got a bunch of. Uh, Got a bunch of emails last night, as I always do, text messages, etc. And uh, and people were talking about this Cora Jade, and they were telling me what an absolute geek her character was. Oh my god, what a geek. Made her look like a fool again, and I thought, oh man. I didn't doubt it, because, you know, if you've watched NXT 2.0, uh, they've done an excellent job of making Cora Jade look like a total geek, pretty much from day one. So I thought, oh, man, what do we got this time? So uh, so I watched the show, and uh, Cora Jade comes out to do a promo about how she failed at WrestleMania, and her family was in the crowd, and, uh, you know, but she wasn't going to give up, and this wasn't going to be the dust herself off promo. And she actually, I thought, did one of the best Cora Jade promos I've ever seen her do. So I thought, all right, well, that was good. And so uh, then all of a sudden, uh, the music hits after she rattles off this list of, of uh, WWE women who were her idols. And one of the names that she mentions is Natalia. And uh, Natalia's music hits. And Natalia comes out, and she gets a hero's reaction from these, these, uh, these folks in the crowd. They're going crazy for her. Natty's actually in tears because she's gotten such an, an amazing reaction from the crowd. And, uh, you know, the one thing I will say is, you know, uh, I'm sure that Cora Jade was really excited to see Natalia probably when she first showed up at the building in real life. But, man, she had to act like the most starstruck, uh, just the biggest mark in the history of man when Natty showed up. But even then, it was like, well, you know, the story is that she had this journal and she wrote what she wanted to do. And she was a huge fan. And, you know, in storyline, maybe she overdid it. 
You know, the same way that when someone kicks out of one of Becky's moves, she has to overdo the, oh, my God, ah, bite her fingers, everything like that. Ah, whatever, you know, she's a big fan of Natalia. So Natalia gets in the ring, and she starts doing this promo, and she tells a story about how there was a house show uh, probably about 10 years ago or whatever, and Natty was at the show, and Cora Jade was in the audience, and, uh, you know, Natty won or whatever, and she pointed to somebody in the crowd, and she happened to point directly at Cora Jade. And this, like, was was mind-blowing to Cora Jade. And she Cora immediately went on Twitter, and she allegedly DM'd Natalia, which I'm not sure you can DM a Natalia if Natalia's not following her. Maybe you can. But anyway, she uh, sent her a, a DM, and according to Natty, she saw the DM, like, a week ago for the first time after 10 years. So apparently she doesn't check her DM, so if you're going to DM Natalia, don't even bother. But anyway, she's like, oh, my God, and she says, you know, I've looked at this locker room, and... And uh, I've seen all of these different women. And she says, you, Cora, you are the future of this NXT locker room. And Cora can't even believe her ears that her idol is saying that she's the... Uh, the uh, I'm remembering all this off the top of my head, by the way, which is pretty amazing. Must have been a pretty decent segment. And so, finally, after all of that, Natty does the big line, I've seen the future. And the future looks bleak. And she boots Cora Jade. She puts the boots to her and everybody boos. And poor Cora Jade's laid out, and Natty's all evil Natty, and then later she goes back to the locker room, and she says she's putting all of them on notice. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, they, they, they beat up Cora Jade, and her idol turned on her and everything. But, I mean, for some of you, it's like, this is the first time you've ever watched this show. On the scale of things that they have done, to make Cora Jade look like a geek, this is like at the bottom. I mean, this was just Natty being a horrible person and coming out here and turning on poor Cora Jade. And, you know, I mean, I shouldn't say this because, you know, they do treat Cora Jade like a geek, so it's possible she'll lose the feud with Natty. But I fully expect that they're going to do a Cora Jade versus Natty match down the road, and Cora Jade's going to beat her. So I had no problem with this segment whatsoever. I thought it was a good segment. I thought it was a good way to put heat on Natty. Natty's going to beat up some other women in the locker room. Cora Jade, I would presume, in the end, it's always a mistake to presume with NXT, but, you know, this is one of those things that, I don't know, I think they're going to I think they're gonna let her beat Natty and get a big win. So, I mean, I at the end of the day, I didn't think this was uh, all that bad for Cora Jade at all. I thought this was one of her better segments she's been involved in in NXT. Am I, apparently, I'm the only one. Is that true? Well, I mean, I guess it's because she kind of looked like a geek, but she's looking she's looking like a geek fangirling up to Natalia. And by the way, there's like 17 different Briscoe brothers outside ready to do landscaping all over this neighborhood. So don't blame me for this. But uh, yeah, that seemed to be the thing that got the second most attention last night. What seemed to get the most attention last night and what I would have thought was the main event portion of the show I don't know if you saw this or not, and maybe you fast-forwarded through it. Lash Legend kicked Nikita Lyons right ass over tea kettle. That yeah. seemed to be the biggest thing that came out of NXT and you know last what? night. Forget I, about the, the tag titles, any of that. It was Nikita and Lash. I didn't go back and, and re-watch uh, that, but it looked great. And I yeah. think they actually did some very clever, uh, you know, movie magic. And they might have done a switched camera angle. They might, might have put in some uh, sound effects or whatever. But it was actually great. So uh, here's the thing, everybody. Here's the thing with, uh, with geeks and wrestling, okay? If you challenge Mandy Rose for the women's title at the biggest show of the year, and Mandy Rose accepts... And it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one match, you and Mandy Rose, okay? But then another team wins the Dusty Cup, and they choose, instead of, of challenging for the tag titles, they are, insert themselves into your match with Mandy Rose. And you're happy about it? This doesn't bother you at all? Okay, that's a geek. All right. And then, of course, she went on to lose. Like, it was three baby faces versus one heel, and the heel won. Okay. That's making people out to be geeks. All right. But just doing a segment where you're out there and your idol comes out and you're really happy to see your idol 
And then you never meet your heroes because they end up turning out to be horrible people. And this person boots you and puts you in the sharpshooter and makes you suffer. Okay, that's called building heat. Like, you have to get heat on baby faces in order to do feuds. We can't sit here and go, well, anytime you get heat on a baby face, the baby face is being a geek. Because then you don't got pro wrestling. You've just got, you're not allowed to book anything because no matter what you do, the fans say a person was made out to be a geek. There are angles that make people out to be geeks, and then there are angles where you're just trying to get heat. And I thought this was a good angle to get heat. I did not think that Cora Jade was a geek, and I think that it's probably going to end up all right for her. So we got to, like, give, we got to let, we got to allow pro wrestling to do pro wrestling. If everything is making someone out to be a geek, then you can't even book. Anyway. I like the segment. The, what do you think the response to Roxy will be? I think it's going to be kind of around the same thing, you know, the, the like Cora Jade, where people are going to be overly concerned with her getting buried, you know, deep down under the earth. But this is what they do there. And, you know, it doesn't mean anything for their long-term future necessarily. Now, there are times where are you getting somebody off on the best start? I don't know. But to be honest, I'd rather be in Cora Jade's position than some of the other women that are on that, that roster right now. Yeah, most of them. Anyway, I saw all of the show. We we got some other news to get into after the break, but I guess the biggest news is that uh, Pretty Deadly is that In their your old your old ring outfit. They're they're the new NXT Tag heat. Team Champions. <laughs> they beat the Creeds in the end. These poor Creeds. I think they've been in line for the titles a couple of times, but got to keep putting it off, brother. Back in a moment with more, everybody. Observer Live. All right, I took off my war correspondent jacket. Anything but else? You, but you still got the watch on. What happened to the Apple Watch? What are you showing Apple? Off I haven't had an Apple Watch in years. You got a Rolex now? You moved up? If you guys had any idea how often I barely make it on the air on time, I, I during that break, I, I uh, had to, uh, anyway, I had to do a lot of things. So He's yelling at his kids. I was actually uh, talking to one of them. <laughs> But uh, yep. anyway, <laughs> 11.35 today, I had a sleeping baby on my lap across town, and I somehow made it here on time. But I did not have time to disrobe. I did not have time to urinate or anything else that I normally would do before the show began. Mike? <laughs> well, you didn't even send me a panic text, so I'm actually really impressed by all that. No, because I always make it work. Oh, yeah. Yes, you do, boss. All right. Hey, there's a couple big news hey, stories. Can you do I me a favor? Can you make it possible? Can I get can into you... these news stories? Well, I want you to figure out a way to make it work where Brutus isn't going to kill himself. <laughs> well, I can't. I, I oh can't do God. that. I can't do that. <laughs> All right. So here, the there's a couple of big news stories here today, which are in fact bigger than Cora Jade's segment. A future WrestleMania match between The Rock and Roman Reigns was teased during a scene on this week's episode of Young Rock. The sixth episode of the show's second season aired on Tuesday night. During the program, Rock was just beginning his wrestling training with his father, Rocky Johnson, at the time. He's later shown with his family watching Yokozuna wrestle at the Royal Rumble on television. A young Joe Anawai, Roman Reigns, is watching the event as well. Joe jumps on Rock's shoulders and asks for someone to give him a Samoan drop. When no one responds, he asks them all to acknowledge him. That's historically inaccurate. Joe pleads with his cousin to wrestle him in the living room, but Rock tells him, quote, The world's not ready. A match that big can only happen at WrestleMania. Now, I've been wrong before, okay? But WWE absolutely, 100%, without question, wants the Rock and Roman Reigns to headline next year's WrestleMania in Los Angeles, okay? I have said from day one, I don't think this match is going to happen. And the reason for that is because, you know, The Rock is, is uh, he's a big-time movie star. You guys aware of that or not? So, uh, you know, The Rock does a movie, and he makes $25 million or something. So in order to do WrestleMania, number one, he's got to clear his schedule of any movie that's going to pay him $25 million to do a WrestleMania match where I'm pretty confident they ain't going to pay him $25 million. That's number one. Number two, even if you postpone your films, the last two matches that The Rock had in WWE, he seriously injured himself. Now, 
don't know if you guys remember the last two matches Rock had, but it was with John Cena in 2011, and it was with John Cena in 2012. Well, uh, looking at my calendar here, it's 2022. So the last two times this guy wrestled, he seriously injured himself, and he was 10 years younger, okay? The guy that injured himself seriously in both of those matches is 10 years older today, all right? So I'm sure, I'm sure that Rock would love to do a match with Roman Reigns. I'm sure that Rock has verbally told WWE, you know, I'm going to do everything in my power to do a match with Roman Reigns next year. I'm sure that WWE is presuming it's Rock and Roman Reigns next year. I think it ain't happening, okay? But the fact that he put this in Young Rock, I mean, I think that he in his brain is committed to doing this match. Obviously, WWE in their mind, they're committed to this match. So it's going to be very interesting to see if the match takes place. Obviously, you know, we'd have the biggest match in WrestleMania history two years in a row. What a coup that would be. I don't know what they're going to do about that afterwards. You know, WrestleMania 2024, 2025, et cetera, et cetera. But that's clearly 100% absolutely the plan. And uh, we'll see if it happens. It's a good plan. <laughs> it's a really good plan. You're running Hollywood and... Uh... You know, I don't know how you check on somebody's production schedule for movies. I'm not into movies and all that, but, you know, I guess you can. everybody can start paying attention to what Rock's got, you know, in his future plans. I know he's got the XFL stuff that's going to be coming up that I guess in theory, you know, next WrestleMania would be kicking off the season around that time. So maybe that's something that he wants to do, and I'm sure he wants to do it. I'm sure he wants to do it because it's wrestling and it's the rush. I'm sure he wants to do it because it's family, and it would be awesome for Roman, and it would just be what a – what a moment it could be that that entire weekend, the celebration of that whole Samoan dynasty, you know, everybody in, in California, that would be that would be really cool. And I'm sure they're going to do all that stuff anyway. But I guess then the question is, if they don't do The Rock, what do you do? And as it stands right now, you know, we don't want to see Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns again. What would the answer be? Could it be Cody or what I would like, but you'd have to keep him very safe throughout the entire year. It would be nice, Braun Breaker, because I don't know what else other than The Rock, you know, what what exactly, what can you do to pull somebody in? And I don't know who's going to be on the market or anything like that, but just as it stands right now, it's like, well, if it's not Rock, you better keep Braun Breaker strong. That way you could have a really, you know, a hell of a showdown between he and Roman for that show. You know what else I might mention before I go to uh, Dynamite here today is, you know, I, I think I I think I can figure out what is in The Rock's head as far as uh, this WrestleMania match. And uh, that is that, yes, you would probably have to give up a fair amount of money. Because you got to think about this. If Rock's going to do WrestleMania, it ain't just one day. He's probably going to have to show up around the Royal Rumble, and he's going to be on TV for three months leading to the Royal Rumble. And he's going to have to put a lot of uh, commitment into this, okay? And yeah, it may not be worth the $25 million he would make to do some, you know, blockbuster or whatever. But, but, Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble to WrestleMania. You know what that is besides WrestleMania season? That's XFL season. And uh, The Rock owns the XFL. And so, potentially, I would bet in his mind, it's, I am going to do this WrestleMania... And I'm going to be out there every week with my XFL jerseys on. Absolutely. And I'm going to promote the hell out of this XFL because that is a long-term investment for myself. And so, you know, the show, if I'm on, on WWE television, it's going to be 2 million viewers every week, most likely. So uh, I'll get out there with my jerseys on. We'll have, edit, we'll have XFL plugs. I'm sure Vince will be thrilled to be uh, plugging the XFL that he basically sold and then the Rock bought. But uh, I would bet that there's a great deal of, of synergy that is involved in this deal. And that's uh, one of the reasons that he wants to, uh, to get this done. Of course. Of course. Think about all the other things that he does, too. And, you know, the Super Bowl's in February. They're going to try to kick this thing off, you know, for spring season. And, you know, there are a lot of other things that he can do that week that can tie in all of his other businesses and, and interest and things like that into that week. So, you know, any money he does lose, and yeah, again, I'm, I don't think anybody's going to be playing any violins for The Rock. CM Punk and Penta are set to face off for the first time ever. Tony Khan announced a match this Wednesday for Dynamite tonight, UNO Lakefront Arena, New Orleans. 
Saturday, Punk got a, put out a call on social media for someone to face him on the show. He tagged several wrestlers, including Penta, who responded, Let's do it! I'm ready! He should have responded in, uh, in uh, Spanish, and then uh, Alex Abrahantes could have retweeted and said, <laughs> Penta tweeted, Let's do it! I am ready! The AW president also revealed, Tonight's show, I don't like this trend, will potentially go past 10 Eastern. He noted on Twitter, TBS has granted them permission for an overrun. Updated lineup for AW Dynamite has uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus Red Dragon, Minoru Suzuki versus Samoa Joe, Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz versus Jericho Hager and Daniel Garcia, Swerve and Keith Lee versus Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks, MJF versus Sean Dean, Marina Shafir versus Sky Blue, and CM Punk versus Penta. And uh, yeah, somebody did uh, text me yesterday and they said, What does AW need an overrun tomorrow for? I hadn't heard the story yet. I was like, what are you talking about? Then I uh, found out about it, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what they need an overrun for. Why do we need an overrun? Except to make the show longer. I mean, that's one of the, that's one of the benefits of AEW is it's not a three-hour show. I don't mind every once in a great while having, like, a, a big edition of AEW Dynamite and doing, you know, two hours and ten minutes or whatever. But, uh, you know, I'm sure it's just me. Uh, but Nobody so... ever complained about a, de- a raw overrun when things were good. Well, my point is, I watch <laughs> you know. this NXT show every single week, and every single week it is two hours and nine minutes. Not one time has a show needed to be nine minutes longer than two hours. Not once ever. And every time I see it, I'm like, why is this show going nine minutes past the top of the hour? <laughs> I don't have a good answer. It's irritating. It's unnecessary. And I watch enough wrestling. You go whole like dad style on that hours. TV. Just stand back, hands on your hips, shaking your head. Why? Why? You don't need to do this. By the way, for our friends in Canada who may be listening, this is from John Pollock. TSN's programming team is aware of the overrun for Dynamite and, quote, it will not affect coverage, end quote. But they do suggest that those relying on DVRs to record the next program so that they don't miss the overrun portion. So keep that. Well, in the back luckily of your I've got I've got YouTube TV, which is the best streaming service for cable there is, and I've tried all of them. Hashtag ad. You do it's easy. Like you, all you do is you you. Uh, I said it. You like, you know, you just Google Dynamite or whatever, and there's a little plus button. And you hit that plus, it records every single show. It doesn't matter what time it's on. It doesn't matter what day it's on. It doesn't matter the length of the show. It doesn't matter if there's a, a, a preemption early. Every time, perfect without fail. Can't say that about your DVRs. Back in a moment with Juice Robinson. Observer Live. Hello? Juice Robinson, how you doing? How you doing? Man? Hey, it's Brian Alvarez here. We literally are calling you as we go on the air. How you doing today? Very good, very good. All right, you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, I apologize for the technical difficulties, but uh, I won't name drop somebody, but they forgot to send us your message. But hey, here we are. How you doing today, Juice? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. How are you? Very good. So we, uh, we've we had a lot of questions about you, and uh, the first question is uh, basically status of uh, New Japan proper. Uh, what are what are your plans as far as uh, traveling back over to Japan? You've been here for quite a while. Yeah. Um, interesting you said that. Uh, I don't have any plans to travel back over. I am at the end of my contract. I did a uh, extra three month extension and that ends april 30th so that will be that and i will go i will not be wrestling under the new japan banner any longer there you have wow hmm so so what uh i mean obviously we can't necessarily talk about what's next unless you'd like to but um well what's on your mind what what are you thinking right now well you know i really don't know what's next i'm just gonna hang out and relax for a little while and see what comes to me. So you uh, obviously had uh, traveled over to New Japan after uh, the run in NXT, 
And, uh, you know, it was, I think, during the pandemic that all of a sudden, like, you uh, were st- largely in America and uh, Finley and several other guys as well. Was it sort of uh, this pandemic is just making things difficult, the the lack of fans, the travel, the quarantine? What was it where you kind of decided at that point, I'm I'm happy just sticking around in America for a while? I think it was a combination of all those things. Uh I did. I I was there for nine months. With uh, I did like four of the quarantines. A lot happened. A lot of people. When we stopped going, um, it was just at kind of a boiling over point. And I did. And then they they allowed us to go home. And then strong kind of took off. And then they then we were kind of needed. So it was kind of uh, kind of two things happened. We did ask to not be going any longer, but then we were needed domestically here for strong because, well, you need you know you need Jay White and you need you need guys to fill up the uh, show, you know. Oh yeah. Now there is a uh, there is a moment that uh, I mean we can go back to this here in a second, but I've been wanting to ask you this question now for uh, probably about six months. You had a match with uh, I believe it was Hikaleo on New Japan Strong, and it was a, uh, it was like a hardcore match, and you guys are brawling all over the place, and uh, yeah. I think it was Hikaleo, but regardless, you set up this table in the corner, and, uh, and you laid him on this table, and you climbed up to the top rope, and you were going to do that jumping senton and, uh, and go through the table, and, uh, and I think that he moved out of the way, but the point of this is, you, I've never seen someone jump so high, and you jumped so high in the air, and you came down, and you were determined to go through that table, and that damn table did not break. And it looked like you had, like Jim Ross would, if it called the action, he would scream that you'd been broken in half. This was the most brutal, non-broken table spot I may have seen in my lifetime. And uh, are you okay after that? How did you feel after that occurred? Well, I actually broke my knee on that believe it or not <laughs> your knee Ooh. yes my right knee i got a non-displaced fracture in the joint and uh strained some ligaments because all my weight okay so as i was going up there i was going for the senton yeah and i noticed uh the table looked to me like it was about to tip and, you know, I'm not exactly the aerial assassin that Will Ospreay is. So I was kind of panicked. So I jumped, and I jumped a little far. So my weight, uh, my shoulders, less of my ass hit the table than I wanted, more up on my shoulders and my neck. So that slowed that side of my body down. And then the rest of my weight, my butt, and my legs slung down. And the first thing that hit was my right, the outside of my right heel. And I kind of just uh, hyperextended. It oh. come back. Yeah, it sucked. It was, it was like in between being really bad and bad. So I kind of like nursed it for a while, tried to train on it for a while, exacerbated it. Finally just got off of it for a few months. And I'm just now starting to feel you know, really 100%. <laughs> Dude, I, I remember watching that and... Go ahead. It's wild that you asked that, though. Yeah, but many people might not know. It was actually my knee that got really messed up there. Yeah, I, I remember... Well, I, I watched the match, and then we have uh, we do a show here on the site with Filthy Tom, and uh, and he was yeah. on that show. And uh, I was... Like, he never tells me anything, because I guess, you know, everyone's got an NDA or whatever, but, like, I was begging him, could you please tell me if Juice is okay? Because I thought... And the funny thing is, I guess it's not funny, but I saw it, and, like, if you would have told me that you would have broken pretty much anything else in your body on that spot, I would have believed you. But the last thing that I would have thought would have been your knee. It looked like yeah. everything else in your body was shattered on that. And then, you know, I think, I think Tom went as far as to go, yeah, he wasn't feeling too good in the back. But he wouldn't tell me anymore. <laughs> so I've been waiting, like, six months to be able to ask you if you're okay after that spot. Yeah, I was actually... Uh... Um, I was set to, I had to get back to Orlando, so I was on a um, red eye. So 
I immediately went to the back and packed all my stuff, and I noticed that my knee was hurting. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, everybody thought my neck was hurt, uh, including Tony, my wife. She thought <laughs> she was very angry at me, obviously, for doing that. But, yeah, everybody thought my neck was hurt, but, nope, it was my knee. And I just kind of limped through the airport and limped around on it for a few weeks, never got better. And after a couple, after two months, I think it was, I finally got an MRI and it was, yeah, cracked. So that made sense why it hurt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I don't, I know you don't know what's exactly going to happen in your future here, but I'm not sure how much of a reflective person you are. And I, as a fan, you know, you leaving WWE and going over to New Japan, a lot of people, I think, maybe scratched their heads. And with the CJ Parker guy, you know, him in, in New Japan, and you went over there and not only silenced those critics, I think you went, I mean, way above and beyond what I think anybody had expected uh, from a foreigner over there in the mix. And as we start to close things up there with New Japan, Looking back on your time, what had been the most fulfilling thing for you going over there? Is it proving people wrong? Is it proving something to yourself? Some of the matches that you had? As, it, as that portion seems to close for right now, as you reflect back, if you do, what were some of the highlights for you? Yeah, I think I, had, I definitely had some matches that I was proud of, that I thought were good. Um, I think the the thing that I'm the most proud of is like I was part of a I was part of a team and those guys we you know we traveled up and down that the country you know together you know doing a lot of shows I wrestled 150 shows one year 130 140 ran over to Mexico but I was on the shows with all the guys for years and I was part of the team and I'm just proud that I was that I you know. I got there and learned how to fit in, and I fit in and became, you know, a functional part of it. That was awesome, and I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the camaraderie. Um, yeah, the brotherhood that is New Japan Pro Wrestling. You know, that'll always be a very special thing that I got to do in my life, and it'll be a part of my life forever. Uh, but, yeah, it's... I. I got so lucky that I got to end up there. <laughs> what a what a great roll of the dice, you know. They hit the right number for me. Absolutely. And, you know, you've had some unique situations. Obviously, the indie scene in the last God knows how many years has taken on, you know, a life of its own. And we've seen the GCWs, the AAWs, the Defy, so many of these promotions. And during WrestleMania weekend, one of the most intriguing tag matches of the entire thing <laughs> at WrestleCon, you, Colt Cabana, the Rock and Roll Express, and Hitsushi Onita against Barry Horowitz, Fandango, Jimmy Wang Yang, Enzo, and PCO. Just a completely, what a WrestleMania week type of match <laughs> to take place. How did that come about, and how much fun did you have with the Rock and Rolls and with Onita? i tell you what, I did have a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> if you would have told me as that match was ending, um, you would have thought otherwise. But looking back now a couple of weeks, I, I, that was great. <laughs> the whole day was a lot of fun. <sighs> How it came about, man, I don't know. You know, I, I was told I had a match. Then I found out it was a 10-man. Then I started hearing some of the names getting thrown around. and <laughs> I was like, well, you know, at WrestleMania, things like this happen. So I definitely wanted to be a part of it. And I'm glad that I was. Who's out there on your checklist of somebody that you haven't faced yet who could be out there that you're thinking about? Is there anybody that you kind of look back, you kind of look at and go, eh, you know, maybe, maybe them, maybe, maybe this person, maybe that person, Brian Danielson, who knows, somebody like that? No. That's, I don't really have anybody that I want to wrestle, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, there's nothing that really, you know, I just don't have the urge to wrestle really anymore. <laughs> you think you so could be a good not, house husband? I think I could be a great house husband. Dog <laughs> walk. I think I could do that quite well. Well, before we get to house husband, this weekend you've got uh... – you got the Windy City Riot. Tickets are sold out, by the way, for this show. And it is uh, Finn Juice and Brody King 
versus TMDK and Bad Dude Tito. What are your thoughts on this one? Oh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Look at the people that are in it. Um, it's going to it's going to be a sold out show. Uh Chicago's always a great crowd. Um, everybody in that match is going to want to, you know, have a moment. They're going to want to get down and dirty. It's going to be violent. It's going to be awesome. Uh, it's going to be a great, great time. And then not only that match, but all the great, like, legit pro wrestling matches that you're going to get, this this show is going to be one that we're going to be proud to pin our hat on. Got a Shii and Minoru Suzuki, which sounds awesome. Moxley and Will Ospreay. Jay White's doing his uh, US of J Open Challenge. We'll find out who that's going to be. Tom Lawler and Yuji Nagata. Holy smokes, what a show. Fight, Fight.TV this weekend. So is this the last booking you've got? Yeah. Wow. And then who knows? House Husband? The job is available. The job <laughs> is available. How is Tony doing? Is she excited? Oh, she's great. Yep, she's uh, at um, AEW right now. She loves it. Just a <laughs> just a great time now. Yeah. She's now, happy. if you did, if you did uh, retire to the house husband role, when we come back from the break, I want to ask you about some other options that you uh, you would be thinking about doing. So we'll do that before we wrap it up. Stand by, everybody. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Juice Robinson is joining us here today. We got the New Japan Strong Show coming up this weekend. The uh, Windy City Riot. Tons of big matches here, including Finn Juice and Brody King versus TMDK and Bad Dude Tito. And uh, Juice, let's get some plugs in. Your social media, however else you want people to know what's going on with Juice if you're not in pro wrestling here for a little while. I got no social media, so that's going to make this very, very short. Nothing? You've got You've got something yeah. resembling a Twitter here. No, no, I have nothing. I don't have any social media at all. Wow. Smart man. <laughs> I mean, you're you're wildly intelligent to not have it, but now no one's going to be able to contact you or see what's going on. Will you keep I in like... touch somehow, Juice? Yeah, just know I'll be all right. <laughs> Even if you can't see Juice, Juice can see you, people. Remember that. That's right. I'll keep an eye on everybody from afar. That's right. And we did mention during the break, not sure if the air's going to go long or, or just get shaved off, because sometimes when these things happen, you don't know which way it's going to go. Yeah, that is true. Right now, it still feels really nice. So it's staying for now. Luxurious? It's, yeah, it's, it's a lot better than dreadlocks. <laughs> well, that's true. It's probably a lot easier to manage as well. Well, listen, Juice, I want to wish you the best in everything. Uh, we talked a little bit during the break, but uh, did a great run in New Japan. Hope everything works out great for you, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, that's it, everybody. I want to thank you for listening. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.